Okay. Um. Let's see. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Alright, guys. This is a SMT a DDR. And I am here once again to make another YouTube video. We're talking about uh, how to make a lobby in a Tatsunoko vs. Capcom. And, you know, a lobby for all the game FAQ people or all the people are still hanging on, still playing this game. It seemed to be a little bit of a cult following. I kind of enjoy writing code for it. I just want to talk about how um, I went about uh, writing a uh, code that would help support a new lobby. Um, here we go. We're going to talk about uh, what is a lobby in the fighting game world. Why does TVC need a lobby? Um, the query string, if you've seen my hide and seek video, it's important you see that video because this stuff won't make any sense without it. Uh, join a list of available players. UDP packets, a little bit of Python code, and a discussion of sockets, not so much, but a little bit. And the conclusion. So, a lobby in the fighting game world is uh, usually divided by, say, skill level, or being able to play casual matches versus ranked matches, which will affect your win, lose, uh, stats, uh, you know, things like that. Maybe in the real world you might compare it to a skiing where people will start off in the beginner skiing area and the experts will go into more challenging runs and you usually want to keep those groups divided so both people have full enjoyment of uh, the facilities. So, you know, that's, that's kind of how that is. Or if you want to play casual matches and not actually worry about your points being lost or gaining points or anything like that, you just want to play casually and warm up and practice before you start playing for keeps, you know, like maybe gambling but not with, without actual money, that kind of thing. Uh, okay, so you may wonder why does TVC need a lobby or another lobby, it already has two, free battle and rank battle. There are two others, rival and friend battle, but since you have to actually target a particular person that you see online and hope that they reply you and start a fight, I don't really count that as a lobby. I consider lobbies a group of words, a whole bunch of people just waiting to fight each other and without really knowing who they're going to run into. Um, we need this because of the cheaters that are online. I guess with as with any, as most things in life, there's people always trying to find ways to take advantage of the situation or exploit a weakness. Um, let's see. One of them is lag switching. Sometimes, uh, or during a match, somebody will begin a network intensive task on the same network that his Nintendo Wii is on. So what happens is uh, the game, to remain in sync, will stutter both sides and both sides of um, both Nintendo Wiis, even the guy with a good connection with no network intensive tasks, such as I don't know, if you start streaming Netflix or uh, you start a BitTorrent or some HD YouTube thing, something like that. And it'll become very difficult to play. There are some characters in the game that are um, very difficult to control under lag because it can also, um, besides um, stuttery animation, it can delay your button inputs so that when you enter a button, it doesn't happen until a second after you push the button. And in the fighting game world, that is a uh, that's a big difference, and it can make a game unplayable with that kind of delay between what you entered and what you see on the screen. So people do that on purpose, and there's some characters in the game that can deal with lag a lot easier than uh, others. Uh, one example is a uh, with lag, if uh, somebody keeps using, uh, say, the character Zero, keeps throwing out those uh, green, I don't know what the name is, but those green crescent uh, attacks. They are very hard to jump over in lag because because it's very hard. The timing is really not that bad, but when it's a, when it's a second delay, I mean, it's, you really 
it becomes very difficult to do. Um, and the other one, rage quitting when you think you're about to lose the match, you just disconnect your Nintendo Wii so you don't uh, take the loss. Uh, think about it as maybe international uh, football, it would be called uh, soccer in the United States, um, where there's only uh, 30 seconds to the match, right, red team has um, just one less of a thousand points or ten thousand points and the blue team has zero there's no way the blue team can make this comeback so if they just quit or somehow end the match before they record the loss on their uh, record and you know that's it and the winner doesn't get the win either and you know that that's not fun nobody likes that you know everybody's trying to play and rank and the ranking thing helps um, Game Spy and, and the game's logic to uh, match similar skilled people together. So when you, when somebody who's supposed to be pretty good but doesn't get his points because someone else keeps disconnecting because they lost, it, it just messes things up and it's not good. It takes time to, um, you have to sit there and wait for the lag for the game to realize the connection is dropped. It's just it's annoying. It's annoying. So. You could find yourself winning like a whole bunch of matches over the weekend and half of them you didn't get the points for because some guy on the other side decided to disconnect. That's not fair. You may be wondering why would my new lobby somehow make it better. The new lobby would only be reachable through a proxy server. I control the proxy server so I can grant access to anybody based on IP address or profile ID. IP addresses change. Profile IDs, while they can change, to change them means you lose all of your points, and since these people are, who cheat are so uh, apparently obsessive about their points, they are not going to want to reset. So once I see their ID and I just, just drop the connection of those IDs, then you know, that, that takes care of that. Also trusted and time proven players online, some of the people I've played against and I really know they've been playing this game for at least a year or more, they'll probably let me know who cheats too and I'll be able to just add them to my ban list. Let's see, so from the previous video, here's what we're gonna talk about. How how can I make a new lobby? I don't have like this game source code or anything. I can't just add a menu s there. It says a uh, SMT DDR lobby. That's not how it's gonna work. We're gonna, we have to do some other trickery with the network connection to uh, to make that happen. And here's uh, here's the theory. So you remember the search, uh, the search query here, this uh, text in blue. Um, <coughs> you see how you see how it has this uh, 90 here, DWC PID. You remember this number. This is my um, profile ID. This is my profile ID since day one that I've got this game. I haven't uh, reset it yet. Uh, let's see. Number of players, all that good stuff post state um, key underscore zero zero right now this key thing I don't actually know what it's for I do know that it's always searching lo searching based on this so here's what I'm thinking maybe in the future I'll do something else like change this number we already talked about what this number is this is a uh, uh, one is free mode zero is uh, ranked mode and two and three are uh, friend and rival mode, or those two could be those numbers could be alternate. I'm not sure, but it's like that. This key thing. Here's what I want to do. Notice that when you're searching for battle, this is always this what they're searching for for the key to be set this way. When you first come online, this thing has no value. And here I say it sets it to an empty string. It's not so much that it sets the empty string as it just doesn't set it to anything. So default to empty string. Um, let's see. So, and uh, when you are on, when you're searching for a, an opponent, this number thing here will be number of players zero. When it be set to one, then you're not available. And this, this, there's a key thing still there. Um, this is this. Uh, oh, let me go back up real quick. This is important because uh, if I change this, if I were to change the network connection when your Nintendo Wii joins the. Uh, master server. I'm going to talk about that some more in a second. If I change it so you join the master server using key 01DR instead of uh, 10, then you'll notice that anybody searching for people to fight 
this is always this way, they won't be able to find you. So, uh, let's say if two players are on a proxy server and I change both of them to key um, 0, 01 instead of 00, zero here, then um, uh, they'd both be invisible. Now, they both wouldn't be able to find each other because they're both searching for this. But if I change it to search, and I've already talked about how I did that in hide and seek, if I change their search to also be 0, 01, and I change their we to um, join the list of players available with 0, 01, then those two would be able to find each other, but nobody else could find them, and they couldn't find anybody other than each other. So, that'd be kind of how that is. So, let's talk about that real quick. The Wii joins the master server. That's number one. Uh, master server returns challenge response. Uh, GameSpy loves their challenge responses, and uh, they can be pretty complicated. Let's talk about that real quick. I don't know if I've talked about that yet. Challenge response. Challenge response. So, um, you know, here's a short example of what a challenge response uh, is. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, da -da 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 -da. So let's say I had a, um, I don't know, um, and, uh, something like that. I don't know. Uh, Let's say I had something like this. Um, da -da -da -da. um ah, let me let me do this. Hold on. Let's say I had this, and um, this is C code, by the way. Let's say I had a uh, uh, mm -mm -mm. okay. So let's say that this program its result was, uh, its output was, um, um, let me see, okay, negative one, one, three, five, seven, nine, um, let's see, and if this, if that's what it prints out, then that challenge, that function there, that, uh, challenge response function needs to be uh, needs to be it needs to look like this so it's kind of like f of x so you may wonder so if you put in zero you got negative one if you put in one you got one if you put in uh, two right you got uh, three and you're probably wondering so what's what's the pattern how how's this work how does this work and what's happening here Hopefully, if you, you spent some time looking at this, you'd be able to figure this out without too much trouble. But that's that's what this is. And so this is a simple challenge response. Um, you should be able to... I, I'd like to think a lot of people will be able to figure this out after a while, in, in about 10 minutes or less or something like that. So you can see if you put in a, if you put in 0, 2 times 0 is a 0, minus 1, negative 1. Put in 1. 2 times 1 is 2, minus 1 is 1. Put in 2, 2 times 2 is 4, minus 1, 3, and you see it just keeps going. That's, that's the algorithm for the challenge response. This is, a simp this is a simple one, right? You put in one number, you get one number back. That, that, that's pretty simple. Um, now, here's where it gets more complicated. GameSpy has that too. This is the challenge. 
and this is the response. One thing I can say about that is the um, response is always um, four thirds um, bigger than uh, than uh, there's, yeah the response is four thirds bigger than the than the challenge and. Uh, but yeah, so here it is, the uh, Nintendo Wii sends this. I don't want to talk too much about this encryption stuff. Never want to talk about encryption too much, but that's what it is. So, this right here is uh, how the Nintendo Wii comes online. It sends this first. I don't know why it sends this, because it doesn't need to. I have code that skips this part and just sends this part, and it works just fine. And, uh... So I don't know why it does that, but it, it does. Public IP zero here, challenge response, and then uh, this is a uh, yeah. So you see, we sent this challenge response. Uh, this is probably the game spy server saying it's okay. I don't necessarily know what this means, but I know that that if I if this were wrong, then it's not gonna look quite like that. And here it is going online with all the input. You can kind of see that key zero down here. It's kind of cut off, but you can't see that. This is Wireshark. I've showed Wireshark in a previous video. This is NGRIP. NGRIP is kind of like an, a, um, kind of like a terminal version of a wire, Wireshark. It'd be good to know this. It is very good to know this. And, um, because it helps say uh, if the server you're working on is remote and you need to see the packs that are going back and forth. Knowing how to do it in the command line is good. You can probably do some fancy exporting stuff to get a uh, Wireshark GUI on your site, but that's not practical. You should just do it this way. This is better. It's faster. Uh, Wireshark would probably be pretty laggy for that kind of thing. And if you want to capture lots of packets, so maybe a couple of megs, you'll find that if you capture, say, 100 megs in Wireshark, Wireshark starts to go very slow and has a very good chance of crashing or consuming all the memory on your computer. They make your computer going very, very slow. So it's better to do this and have it save it out to a file that you can look at later. Um, you can make it save it out to a file in this format, I believe. So, or actually you don't even have to do that. It, you can also have it, uh, if you run this inside a screen session, it's another program that Linux has. You can capture everything like this and you can uh, look at it, search for what you're looking for, all that stuff. Anyways, yeah, you should learn how to use ngrip because it's good It's good to use sometimes. So, Python discussion of sockets. Sockets, sockets, sockets. Um, the way that works. So, the, the Python socket module is just a wrapper around C. Um, I might argue that all of Python is just a wrapper around C, but uh, anything you do when you browse the internet, uh, upload files, download files, it's all sockets. When you when two computers connect to each other um, through a network, it's it's a socket. It opens up a socket. Now, the connection that the um, to join the server online is UDP packets versus TCP packets. Um, so let me let me type that out so in case I didn't pronounce that clear enough. So UDP packets and TCP packets. I would, uh, the difference between them is I would compare, if you thought of uh, cell phones, I'd compare TCP packets to being a, a voice call. And I'd compare UDP packets, UDP packets to a text uh, message. So if you wanted to send a message to somebody, say you wanted to call somebody to bring home dinner or something like that, What's your favorite uh, your favorite uh, Korean restaurant, something like that. So you'd call them, um, they'd reply to you, right, they'd pick up their phone and say hello, you'd, you'd talk to them, tell them to go get you this certain kind of uh, cuisine, and they'd say okay, and then you'd hang up. And in that case, you are positive that they got the message because for everything you said on the phone they replied you uh, confirming that they heard what you said and expecting the next part so if you once you talk to say hello then they say hello you know the next part of your message is 
hey, this is what I need from you, and you expect to reply, okay, I will get this for you, and then you say, okay, bye, you hang up, and then hang up, and you know, the connection's closed, right? Like for two human beings. And a text message, when you send a text message to somebody, say, hey, could you pick me up something? Now, we all know that text messages are not 100%. We've all experienced when we didn't receive or the person we were sending to didn't receive a text message, but we live in a society nowadays that we pretty much believe that a text message will get there, and it usually does, right? enough so that we all rely on it and we don't really consider the possibility of not getting it until it happens. So that's kind of how TCP and UDP work. TCP actually has acknowledgments built into its uh, its protocol, the way it works, and it'll connect and send things like sequence numbers and acts and NACs and things like that. And UDP just sends blindly to a target and there's no guarantee it got to the other side. However, uh, if you have a pretty good internet connection, it probably got there. Just like if you send a text message to somebody, it probably got to the. It probably got there. Um, and the reason you may want that is because at least in gaming, especially online gaming, online real-time gaming, like a fighting game where every half second matters, um, UDP is faster. There's a lot of overhead with TCP acknowledging that. Oh, did you get this? Okay, here I'm gonna send this. Did you get this? That kind of thing. When you just send, 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 send. Uh, and that's why. And so let's take a look at some of this uh, this code. So uh, let me do something real quick. So I talked about this. So here's the, here's the idea. The we sends this right to connect. This is the server, by the way. When I was talking about master server, it sends it here. This is the Nintendo Wii telling the master server, okay, I'm joining a list of fighters that I, I want to go online and fight people. So I'm putting myself in this list make myself available to everyone else looking for battle. That's that PID number, you remember that from my last video. Uh, there's mode 1, right there, mode 1, that's a free battle. This is my level 19, I believe that's star level. I think country is North America, that's what this is, I talked about that in hide and seek video. Uh, my public IP address, what is that number? Why is, that doesn't, doesn't look like the IP address I'm used to seeing. Um, so an IP address doesn't have to be express and dotted notation that we're all used to all the time. Another way it could be expressed is a uh, decimal format. Um, so let's take that number. Let me, let me show you real quick. Uh, okay, IP decimal right here. So, let's see, IP um, 402934. Let's see. 402934. Alright. 934. Word wrap, right? 407. 407. Let me click on uh, submit here. So the IP of this is 24.4.74.135. Okay. That's my IP. Yeah. Right there. That is my IP address. Um. So that's the um, decimal notation for that. Okay, let me go back. I, um, let me go back to this previous uh, slide. All right, right here. And then when I'm searching for battle, it searches. There's a key um, underscore zero zero dr thing I was talking about. It's searching for battle. It's searching for not myself. I talked about that before. And see that mode one, right? So it says I'm looking for other people in my situation. And this is the situation I'm in. So I set I add myself and I'm looking for other people like myself to fight. So the concept here is I want everybody to go to the proxy. When you want to add yourself to um, game um, to the master server, I add the proxy and I'm gonna change that data and make it key one. Then send it to the master server. When you're searching for somebody to fight, I'm also going to change it. You see that? And change it and then send it to MS19. That is the concept I'm going for here. So let's let's look at some of that code real quick. Uh huh. So first the master. Um so here we are. The way this works is uh I'll probably look up some of this stuff. Server socket, open up a, a port so that the proxy server is waiting for a connection from anybody's Nintendo Wii. Um, that's what this part is, just stays that way. So, the, this class, I have to, I have to provide a class to that, uh, 
server socket thing right here, right? I have to provide a class to it, and that class has to contain something called handle, which is what is going to happen. Well, you can add other methods you want, but it has to contain a, at least an implementation of handle, or it's not going to do anything, because that's, that's where it goes. So, I receive a connection from Nintendo Wii. Um, I keep its uh, client in the port, print out some stuff, right? I connect here, I create a socket, reuse, bind. Okay, the bind part, it, turned, it took me a while to figure this out, but if you don't bind the source, this, uh, that's what this is, this client address one thing is a source port that the Nintendo Wii opened on its side to send to me. So, if I don't maintain that port, if um, the these UDP packs will have a random source port from the point of view of the GameSpy server, and uh, this is kind of the way sockets works. When you make a connection to another computer, um, the computer would choose the arbitrary port number on your side to be the source, so the other side can uh, reply to. And that number will usually be bigger than uh, 1,024 because those ports below that number are privileged and they're really for root, but for casual use, they're uh, all the port numbers bigger than that. Um, yeah, so I have to bind this to in, in, to ensure that the source port on my side is uh, equal to the source port that Nintendo Wii came from. So the uh, GameSpy server doesn't just drop me because if it keeps getting different port numbers, it'll keep starting the renegotiation process, the whole challenge response thing, over and over again. And this thing you see that socket D uh, datagram. This stands for uh, datagram pass, like UDP. And as I said before, let's see, as I said before, the socket stuff in Python is just a wrapper around the underlying C uh, C socket layer. Probably on Windows or something else, but. When I when I make these videos, I just assume that we're using Linux to do it. So yeah, that's pretty much how this works, and it keeps on uh, it keeps looping as I send get data from uh, the Nintendo Wii. I send it to the server, and uh, this is me sending it. Uh, this is I'm writing this code for a test at first. At some point, what's going to happen is before I send the Wii data, it's probably going to do something like this, right? Alter data. So when I when I call that function alter data that's up here, this is where I replace it, and then I go ahead and send it to the server side. That's what this is, and you see this while one loop here. So I'm going to keep I'm going to stay in this loop, uh, reading from Nintendo Wii, and and uh, re reading from Nintendo Wii, sending it to the server. Uh, after sending it to the server, server will reply me if I got some data. If I didn't, then I break. But if, if I did get some data, then I take it. Uh, I open it up a new socket, and I open a socket to the same source port that I got before, and I write it back to a. Uh, to where is it? Right here. I send it back to Nintendo Wii, and I check again if the Nintendo Wii gave me any data to reply with. If it didn't, go to the top of the loop and check the server again. Um, there was a time I was just kind of closing. The, uh, I was just kind of closing uh, the server port early, and when I did that, I'm not sure what that's about. Maybe it's just a delay because UDP packet, but uh, or maybe yeah, I'm not sure what the timing is. But when I close the socket, uh, it causes an error, network error, an, an ICMP destination unreachable thing. Uh, so I don't, I don't, uh, I I make sure even if the Nintendo we had nothing to say, I go back and make sure the server had nothing to say. And if it didn't, then this break is how I get out of that loop. And I close the server side socket. I don't close the. Let me see. It. I don't close. Uh, oh yeah, I do right here. I'm gonna close this. Um. This part here. This is interesting. Let me see here. Okay. This. There's a. Uh, hold on. Looking for a certain connection here somewhere. Hmm, I don't see it. Okay, 
Well, this here. Let me let me uh, let me see. This is not. Uh, well, okay, okay, I see. So, yeah, I make these sockets. I, I create them. This socket here. I get an error when I close the socket that comes from in here. I, you notice here I'm creating new ones. Right, server socket, I created a new one. Me socket, I created a new one. There's one inside of this place here, in, in self request one, I believe. The socket there. And when I use that socket, uh, if I close it, It'll cause this uh, program to uh, it causes the server to shut down bad file descriptor, which is odd because it doesn't happen to me in uh, the TCP one. So I don't know what that's about, but that that's a little bit of code there. This, this is all I do. I, I just run this guy. Now MS19. Uh, when your Nintendo Wii is doing a search, this is how I alter the filter. And let me scroll down here real quick. This is the handle part. All right, there's a Wii socket. There's a uh, server socket. And I create the server socket right here. And this is a uh, TCP stuff instead of UDP. So here's me doing that, receiving all that data. This is what I look at on my side when I'm checking the logs. Uh, so here's me changing the filter. If I find that key thing in there, I make all these changes. All right. Uh, what I would do here, at first I was gonna make it. This is a wild card in SQL, like anything that has, begins with key underscore. But I have a I have a theory that uh, that key thing is using some kind of encryption. So maybe people who are zero zero can never fight people who are zero one. Even if I try and make it happen, there might be some encryption that, or some some kind of encryption or decryption thing that will fail. So chances are I should just make it like this. And in the future, I may even change it so that it, it's this thing I do. Maybe I, I'll change this number instead. And not mess with this. Because this number is probably not using any encryption. But this is my first attempt. I just want to try it and see if this would work. So make and just replace it. And all these other things, I can't remove them from the query. If I remove all of them from the query, it seems to be an error. I, th I think uh, the Nintendo Wii expects certain kinds of, uh, or the Game Spy server expects some of these things to be there. So instead of just removing them, you notice I'll I'll make them values that are like it encompass everything that can ever happen in the game, so I just, so which makes them irrelevant. That's how I do that. So that if you're doing using the hide and seek feature, then all other parameters are not taken into account except for the people you're hiding from or the people you're seeking, and. Uh, this other stuff here is me trying to figure out why you run into matches with people even though you're 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 hidden and it's usually because the other side can start a match and I was kind of debugging that that's what this is about but we won't get into that too much um, that's for a different thing trying to improve the hide and seek server uh, but this is me changing it that's what that code looks like uh, okay so let's get back to it so we've talked about that I have code on my side that waits for you to join, and I change it, send it here. Uh, let me see here. Uh, did I talk about that enough? All right. So, yeah. Okay, I did. It altered. Okay. So when you're when you join the master list of people you want to fight, you join that way. And when the we when the search, I change it. Right. That's how it's going to go. So, you would think then that I can set those um, things up, and when people connect to their proxy server, they connect, they join the master server, but when your Nintendo Wii sends this proxy server, I change it to that, send it to the forward. Key zero, when you search, proxy server, change it to key one. You search. Here are the people out there who are not on their uh, proxy server, they stay zero and zero, 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 zero. So the Wii's on this side can never meet the Wii's over here, and vice versa. I mean, that would be kind of like the other proxy. 
so then all the players that um, really enjoy the game and don't want to deal with people with like horrible connections or always disconnecting before they lose a match and things like that uh... you'd use a proxy and that would be how uh... everybody could avoid the cheaters um, unfortunately this isn't the case all the stuff i've been explained to you actually doesn't work none of this works and here's why remember this number i just talked about this number this uh... ip address number when i saw that in the packet i thought uh... GameSpy would honor this number it would say oh okay uh... this is the public ip to add to its list of people to fight and uh... So, here's an example. Let's say four Nintendo Wii's are connected to me. Here's some IP addresses I made up. Here's a proxy's IP address, right? Um, the proxy is behind a uh, router, which is uh, the same router I am. That's why I was able to do that what's my IP thing, and it matches. Uh, so, yeah. It connects to the proxy, and this is how it's supposed to show up. And there's supposed to be a port number here. That's what's in that's what's at, uh, Master Game Spy. Um, IP address, port number, and all the other values that you saw there, level, mode, everything. So, this is what I expected. That way, when the match happens, it will uh, go back and fight those other people. Like, say, um, IP.1 here could fight dot four, and they'd find each other, and, you know, they'd, uh, they'd fight. Um, but that's not what happens. When I tried this out with another uh, guy that um, plays this game, we did some experimentation, I watched my logs and watch the um, entries in the master server's uh, player list. It looks like this. Now, this is not what I wanted to happen. You see these IP addresses? You see the difference? This is a big difference. That's a big difference. So, because of that, because of this, you can't have the same IP address multiple times in, in the master server. When that happens, the master server starts kicking other people off. It doesn't really, this doesn't really work right. Also, even if it did, at least it doesn't. At least from my test, it does not look like it works right. They they'll exist for a while, but they seem to disappear. So it could be because my code is a, uh, or our tests are changing the source port or something like that. Because the Nintendo Wii will just get disconnected. It doesn't work right. So this is not what I want. What's going to happen here? Let's say this even did work with different port numbers. That means everybody who connects would go through me first, and I'd send it back. So if one and two wanted to fight each other. One would communicate with the proxy server with two while during the fight. This cannot be. The lag for that would be ridiculous. So, uh, yeah, this this that messed me up. I don't know why GameSpy ignores that um, field that we that we talked about before. This this number, but because of that, because of that, none of this works. And. That's it. All the stuff I did for UDP packets and all that, the code I was showing you and everything, once I did that test and found out that everybody who joins the master server through my proxy shows up with my IP address, it made this entire thing uh, not practical. It doesn't work. And, uh, you know, that's it. So, thanks for watching.